Okay, this is uh, this session is an introduction and overview to Redfish. Uh, I uh, currently working uh, at Intel. I've worked there about 23 years now. Um, I'm also um, a member of the uh, Distributed Management Task Force, which uh, Carl had mentioned multiple times in his presentation. Um, on on the board, and I'm uh, vice president of Alliances. Um, most recently, uh, I'm now a part of um, Open Compute. Uh, platform. I'm part of the incubation committee uh, focused as liaison to uh, hardware management. Okay, a little bit about the DMTF. So um, it's an uh, industry standard organization which has been around about uh, two and a half decades. Um, we focus on developing management standards. Uh, no other standards but, but interfaces into manageability. Um, what I can say is I found that manageability uh, standardization is far more collegiate than other standards bodies because uh, it is not considered a, a value add to a lot of companies. They, they focus on performance and service and manageability usually comes last. And so it's far easier to get people to agree in a room that we shouldn't do this arbitrarily differently. Um, that, that the value here is to get this um, into as many systems as possible. Uh, membership includes um, uh, you know, about 60 companies. Uh, and we have active chapters in both uh, China and Japan. Uh, on our website, we have uh, links to translations of our standards to both uh, in Japanese and in, in Chinese. Uh, we're allied with uh, uh, numerous uh, standard organizations. I'll mention a couple of them in the next couple of slides. Uh, that's where uh, uh, my uh, VP of Alliances mainly focuses on. And then we're, there are, uh, we have 80 academic alliance members who do research based on the technology that, that uh, the DMTF puts out. Okay, uh, and lastly, a uh, number of our standards are recognized by both ANSI, uh, nationally within the US and internationally by ISO. Uh, quick uh, overview of the agenda. Um, we we'll start with talking about Redfish and why a new interface. I mean, we just uh, heard from Carl about uh, SIM, uh, why, why yet another interface, and then um, a review of some of the models that we've created, and then uh, the tool chain that we've uh, been able to establish. Um, um, Carl mentioned uh, a, a Python tool for, um, for uh, SIM WebM. Uh, we've created quite an elaborate collection of, of, of tools because we've understand that the tool chain is, is uh, what will drive this thing. Okay, so uh, Redfish. Um, so Redfish itself is a, is a RESTful interface. Uh, we were basically approached by a number of the end users, the data centers, saying that um, um, we'd like to go uh, for some of the industry to go create a RESTful interface. Uh, we, we have IPMI, we have SIM, we need something far more easier to, for um, us to utilize. Um, that currently the way uh, they do manageability is that they either hire people to do manageability or they take existing developers and have them do manageability for a while and then come back to the main, frame, main, main line of stuff that they do. And the learning curve to go off and do manageability is a little prohibitive and that they would very much like us to use the same tool chains they use for their, for their main line, right, uh, that, to use for manageability. So you can take these people, send them off to do manageability for a while, and, not, and they not see it as a dead end for their career, and they could come back and, and come back to their main line after they spent some time uh, doing manageability. So um, the goal of, of this interface was to manage not only compute, which is uh, the DMTF's um, our focal point, but also storage, network, and then DSIM, and DSIM is uh, data center infrastructure management. This is all the um, stuff that does not compute, the, the cracks, the power units, the uh, air distribution units, the baffles, everything in the data center which is associated with facilities that is not part of the compute uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, and they wanted to be uh, leverage existing internet tool chains uh, and standards. They want to be usable by professionals and amateurs. I did not want this to be a, 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 a block of a specialized knowledge that you had to go learn. And so this is where uh, you know, uh, my comparison to, to SIM always comes because people ask, because I'm from DNTF, you've got SIM, why, why, why have you often done this? And I use the, the CAR model. 
is that when a system is running, uh, you want to deal with it at its highest level of abstraction. Steering wheel, brake pedal, gas, gas pedal, right? It's only when you suspect that a problem is wrong or the thing starts to conk out that you get out and you lift the hood and you see all the complexity behind the stuff that you've been using and you attempt to deal with it. And so I look at Redfish as the steering wheel, right? If it's operating, uh, some level of diagnostics, idiot lights, whatever, right? But when something gets really complex, you have to, you need a model that expresses that full level of complexity. And that's where Sim comes in, okay? So, um, so the resource model it was is for managing. So, so uh, as I'll mention, Redfish is split into two sections. One is the interface itself, and then there are the models. And the models are, are what allow it to manage different uh, domains. So uh, we want a common, common platform manageability for all these platforms, whether it be um, compute, storage, or, or networking. Right? If it's a platform, it's a, if it's a device, if it's a chassis, you should be able to manage it using the same models. There shouldn't be separate models, whether you're a networking device versus for your, whether you're a compute device. And, and uh, that includes you know, the powers, the thermals, the inventory, its ability to reboot and firmware running on that particular platform any telemetry you want to go fetch from that, okay? And then domain-specific capabilities are, are, are where uh, DMTF leverages on its alliance partners. Uh, as the diagram on the right uh, shows that DMTF focuses on, on compute. Uh, we released our specification in August of 2015. Uh, we went to our good friend, Snia, who had worked with us on SIM and, and showed them uh, Breadfish, and a year later they came out with Swordfish in, in August of 2016. And then, um, so uh, I believe there's a plug fest downstairs that some of you guys can go off and attend that they, 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 they have a standard, they have implementations, they're off testing it. Uh, Redfish had its first plug fest uh, about a couple months ago. Uh, and now we'll have to go deal with networking. And I'll have a future slide on this uh, later on, but that's what we, what we attempted to tackle this year. And the main goal was that we wanted to uh, you know, complete the um, um, uh, extension of Redfish into the networking. And what we've decided is instead of, we went to the experts, which is IETF, and what we're looking at is trying to map their Yang models directly into the Redfish models and then utilize those. So, so it's basically, uh, we're not going to invent our own. Uh, there's a, a great uh, collection of, of uh, Yang models that we can go choose from. And we've already presented to them, and they, they've been quite supportive of that effort. Um, UFI, which is uh, 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 BIOS uh, implementation, so we have a alliance partnership with them, so they can actually, um, within BIOS, have a uh, uh, user Redfish interface to, to access any data within the um, uh, baseball man controller. And then lastly, with DSIM, we're working with uh, the Green Grid. So the Green Grid has actually uh, uh, launched a Redfish working group uh, um, within the last month, or so they've submitted the models for managing DSIM equipments directly back into uh, the uh, DMTF. The DMTF has published those as work in progress because we need industry feedback uh, of the entire facilities industry as to what these models, whether the models are necessary and sufficient for what they need to do. Uh, part of that engagement was ASHRAE. So ASHRAE is the Society of, uh, of Heating, Refrigeration, and Air Conditioning uh, Engineers. And they've become very interested in, in uh, the fact that the Green Grid is now interested in us. And so they have a whole bunch of telemetry that they've uh, wanted to, to access that if they can flow into the Redfish model, they would be very much like to um, synchronize the namespace. <laughs> so, um, so the names of their sensors and the names of our, our telemetry are, are identical. They don't have to have a, another mapping mechanism to get the two connected together. Oh, and then lastly, um, at the very top is uh, with compute, since the DMTF is very focused on compute, uh, we've had an ongoing relationship with, uh, with open, open Compute, and most recently uh, with uh, the Open Data Center uh, Committee uh, from China. And so they, they actually are the ones that own the specifications for uh, Project Scorpio, uh, which is the uh, China variant of OCP. So. They're both interested in, in lining up with Redfish. Any questions? 
OK, so why new interface? So uh, I mentioned before that data center uh, companies actually come to, to come to DMTF and said, we need, we need a, a better interface. Oh, I should go this thing out, guys. Sorry. All right. Um, so um, data centers, we're seeing a sea of lots of, of simple servers and, and multi-node servers. They had exhausted the functionality of the current management interfaces. So um, uh, mainly, uh, most of them were using IPMI. Uh, some were using SIM. And uh, they asked for a modern interface. They want a single, simple interface for managing all data center platforms and devices. Because what they were seeing with the current technology was they said, yeah, but in many instances, all I want to do is I want to set the boot path, I want to reset, boot, reboot the system, and then I want to get up to the OS. So I do not want to learn this entire plethora of manageability in various uh, structures in order just to do that because I really want to get up to the OS so I can, because I do my manageability through the OS. I don't do it out of band when the OS is down. So um, they want an interface that would have used cloud protocols and structures, security models. They didn't want uh, specialized uh, models to do any of this stuff. Uh, most of the um, cloud-based stuff had been well vetted by the industry, and they didn't want to have to go justify another uh, security semantic, set of semantics. Okay? And they wanted a schemas. They want schemas to allow introspection of the interface. So one of the benefits of, of Java is that you could, you could look at a, a new Java interface, you could introspect the interface and know exactly what to go off and do with it, right? You, you didn't have to go consult a manual to go figure it out. So they wanted schemas to be able to be able to find a new Redfish interface, understand all the things you could do with it programmatically, and then begin to execute with it um, uh, immediately. And we've already had prototypes where people have been able to find um, the Redfish interface and create auto, generate all the PowerShell commandlets that you could go execute, and, and then from the client side, and then you can chain your, your PowerShell command together and do whatever you want to go off and do. Okay, so uh, at the bo very bottom is, is uh, what, what we came up with. So um, first line is HTTP, so you just do a GET. Uh, you walk up to any browser, actually, you can just type in the path and, and get to it. Um, we use HTTPS as the, as the security semantic. Um, this allows you a path to the exact uh, a resource that you want. In this case, is a computer system one within a systems collection. I will explain more about that, that hierarchy because that's what becomes most important. Um, you pump it into a little Python. Uh, in this case, uh, it's a, you know, the raw access of the Python. You shove it into a Python object, and then you extract um, whatever data you want. So in this case, serial number, and, and you're done. So um, you can, if you walk up to a, a browser and you, you type the get, you get the entire JSON, and you can, you can manually inspect the JSON um, to extract the data that you want from it. Okay? So why HTTP, why JSON? I'm not going to go too much detail, but basically slides. The graphs tell, told us that they were winning. Um, and uh, we should just continue to, to uh, follow the winners. Uh, this is what the data centers uh, pointed us to as things that we should go, go off and utilize. And uh, what this allows is that this actually allows us to get much closer to, to DevOps, right? because DevOps use, utilize these, these tools, and so the DevOps guys don't need to develop a new skill set <laughs> to go up. You know, if they can, if can write uh, Python, if they can launch a browser, they can go off and go do this. It's easy to demonstrate, and it's easy to program too. Okay. And, and more importantly, there's an entire tool chain behind HTTPS, there's an entire tool chain behind, behind JSON that we could take advantage of if we, if we uh, are lined up with these particular tools. So, um, now that hopefully I'm getting interested in the Redfish standard, I will talk, I will dive into a little bit of Redfish. So as I mentioned, Redfish is composed of, of two parts. One is the interface. So the interface is, is uh, how you get messages back and forth. So it's HTTP, encapsulating a, a JSON message. And then uh, we describe the JSON message itself via, via two schema methods. One is via JSON schema, because there's a giant tool chain behind JSON schema. Uh, that you can build. And the other schema is uh, OData CSDL. Uh, we chose two because even though there's a large 
uh, tool chain behind JSON schema, JSON schema is owned by one or two guys, and it's not a standard. It, it exists, people use it, but there is no standard behind it. And we did not want to build Redfish a standard on a non-standard. So instead, we, 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 looked, we looked around in, in Oasis, there is a, um, a schema language called OData, and, and so we chose to use that, and it's CS, CSDO constructs. So now we can, as we find issues with, with, uh, with Redfish, with OData, we can go back to a standard, another standards body and ask and, and relay issues that they can go change, and, and, and the standards pipeline is, is adhered to as, as far as changes. So um, a message goes from, from client to, to service, um, and that's encapsulated, and then the uh, JSON schema and the OData allows us the introspection that we need, because you can, you can go down to a, a Redfish endpoint, grab all the schema, you know, do whatever manipulation you want to go generate to, to inspect the entire interface for you. And so right now, uh, DDMTF publishes uh, a schema and has, has created the schema for the hardware platform chassis and the computer servers. Uh, in that same site, we, quote, host uh, models from other standards bodies. So uh, SNIA has provided the models for Swordfish, and we, we host it. So there's a kind of a one-stop shop to find our models as, as they're being standardized. And that is why the, uh, uh, the Green Grid delivered those, because they're interested in us finalizing the model form because they don't want to understand old data. Uh, they just care about the mockup and exactly what the resource tree looks like. And they're more than willing for, for DMTF to do that and then host it. Okay. So um, this, this, the rest of this is focused purely on, on the Redfish model itself and the um, uh, what it does and the contributions that, that SNEA has made to make sure that it fits their needs also. Okay, so for chassis, uh, so one is that since the DMTF has already done SIM, we knew a lot about manageability, and so uh, we didn't have to ask a lot of people to go figure out what needed to be done. So a lot of this was translated directly from SIM. We said, hey, people use SIM, they use these particular methods, and this is the information they want. We should at least make sure that's, that all of that is available within um, Within Redfish, we also looked at the IPMI model uh, because it had a whole bunch of data that people have been using. So um, we knew that there was an industry and a need for that particular type of data. So, so uh, most of this was kind of like direct ports of, of, um, uh, of stuff over. Uh, one thing I can say is that uh, when, we, uh, when the industry came to us to do this, um, we wanted to do it within the DMTF, and they said, oh, your standards body. That means we won't see you guys for another five years, and you'll come back and may or may not fit our needs. Uh, and, and we uh, basically promised to have, them, have it back to them within a year. So within 11 months, we had, we had released a Redfish 1.0 form. And part of that, uh, we drove it very much like a product um, in, that, in that we had a lot of functionality ongoing. And when we, when we started locking down, we started throwing stuff off the bus as fast as we can to say, we have to meet this date. And with the knowledge that we were gonna come back, right, and, and continue to extend the model once we had established 1.0. So we've done, um, since 2015, I think we've released uh, four or five model extensions. And so some of them we continue to, so our pace right now is, is three model extensions a, a, a year. Uh, to continue accreting all the stuff that we had thrown off the bus in order to get to our first release. Okay. So, um, uh, compute, compute match, I'm not going to go through all of this, guys. Um, uh, but basically, uh, there's chassis management to manage the underlying chassis and the hardware platform itself. There's compute management to manage everything that has to do with compute. There's management infrastructure on how you manage this actual microcontroller that sits on the out of band platform. Uh, so a microcontroller, the out-of-band platform, a microcontroller is a platform which, uh, a controller which is powered. Even when the system is, and the OS is down, this microcontroller is up and running. So you need a way to go manage this thing. It's, it's the way when you believe your OS is hung, that you can go ask this thing, uh, have you heard from the OS in a while? Uh, because my only option out here is to reboot the system. But if you've heard from them, then maybe it's just stuck and, and it'll eventually come back. So the out-of-band mechanism is, is usually powered by trickle power. And so it's a, it's a minimum uh, set of, 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 of 
capabilities in order to kind of reboot the system and get it back up. Because in a very large data center, you ain't got time to send people out to go reboot systems. You want to do it remotely. Uh, discovery. So everyone wants to understand what the inventory is and uh, of compute. And then security, we use HTTPS. We've layered on top of that privileges and, and, and account management. Uh, access and notification, so we did a PubSub thing, right? You subscribe, uh, and then we can publish events to it. Um, we, have, we have logs that you can go off and inspect. Uh, one of the first feedback we got back from our release, um, when we released 1.0 from all the data centers was, what the heck's the host interface? Um, the host interface is the... Uh, so normally, um, BMC is exposing interface out of band, out, directly out to the network, so some remote entity can come in and access it. But all that data is also of interest to that software agent <laughs> running it on the OS. And so they said they wanted that uh, uh, software agent to be able to look down to, to the BMC and say, I want a Redfish interface that I can go access to get that same data. Right? I don't want to be stuck always having to go out of the out of band because out of band normally has a has a weaker network, right? Not as not as big a pipe as in band, and in band has all this processing power that out of band doesn't because it's got this low microcontroller. So um, so um, we released a, a host interface where basically the software agent can say, I need to know what port I need to talk to. So it, it emulates itself as a uh, as an Ethernet port uh, in order to to talk down to the BMC to extract the same data that you could get out of BAM. Okay? And then the last is composition. So uh, composition is something that none of the other standards has, and this has to do with uh, if a... Um, uh, currently, when you build systems uh, or racks, right, you go build racks, you shove them in a, uh, you build servers, you shove them in a rack, and then that's what you're stuck with. You can, you can allocate from that stuff. Um, but with, uh, with Redfish, we uh, uh, created the possibility of you can ask. So instead, so in, with OCP, they've just aggregated the entire rack. So you've got compute nodes and your storage nodes and your memory nodes and we said fine so so if i'm a sysadmin and i want a computer system uh in the old days i just asked for rack number five because i built it uh in the in the new world order uh i want to ask for a system and i want to ask for five cpus 10 gigs of memory so much storage how do i ask for that thing um, so within redfish we've uh, created a semantic where you can just ask uh, and the underlying system will, will build it for you. The Redfish service will build it for you and present it to you. Okay. So, so because one of the problems with the existing model is that if you have a system with 24 gigs of memory and someone asks for 16 and you haven't got anything else with 16 in it, you give them the one with 24, which means your sunk cost for, for your 24 gigabytes of memory is, is lost because you can only get the guy to pay for 16 because that's what he asked for. And so it's this efficiency, inefficiency of the existing system that we're trying to squeeze out with comp composition. So you, you get your workload, it has a specific hardware requirement, you get that hardware requirement by, by asserting a composition request to a Redfish service. Okay? Questions? That's all I'm going to talk about, about composition. That's far too, far too uh, uh, deep of a topic. So this is this is an I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk to any of it other than the fact that this is what you get. So you go and do a get on on computer system one. This is your JSON packet that you get back. It's a bunch of name value pairs. So you don't you don't need Python, right? You can just read this thing and figure out exactly what you want out of it. Um, it has simple properties, which are just name value pairs. It has complex properties, which are um, uh, just kind of a hierarchy, so under status, there's actually a sub thing called state and then health. And so you just grab the entire object itself. So all this gets pumped into Python, and Python deals with this very, very easily. There's subordinate resources, so when you get a computer system, it has a whole bunch of stuff. It has, it has processors, it has memory, it has disk drives, it has logs. And your, your subordinate resources is just a linkage, a reference to another object you can go get if you want that data. So if you just want to know about computer system, you can just do a fetch, uh, get on this, and you're done. If you want to understand and get all the information about each processor on the system, you can go wander down to um, a, a subordinate resource and get all that in particular information. Okay? 
And then there's associated resources. So subordinate resources are contained within the computer system. Associated resources are not. So your chassis is not, and your management engine is not. So there are references to other parts of, of the model that you can traverse to if you want to know where that computer system is hosted on and what entity manages that particular computer system. Okay? And then last is actions. So uh, manageability is not complete if you just get data. So um, actions uh, uh, encapsulate what you can do with the system. And in this case, it's uh, what everyone wants to do with the system, which is basically reset it. So, um, so with the reset action, there's a target, which means that, hey, go do a post to that thing, and you will reset the system. And the question becomes, OK, the 10 types of reset, which one are you going to do? So in that case, you go look at reset action info. And reset action info will tell you the, the structure of the message you pass across to it. And in this case, it's, I believe there's only one property in there, which is reset type. And so you can now tell it what reset type you actually want to go, go do, whether it's a soft reset, a hard reset, um, or a system. Right? So everything is encapsulated in this JSON packet of, of what data you can get and how you can interact with the system. And you don't have to go consult uh, any other hardware documentation to go figure out what to go do with it. Okay? So, so walking up to a system and walking up to a, a, a breakfast node that you've never had by traversing the model you can actually reset the system without having done anything, um, uh, consulted any other information. Okay. And if, uh, if you're a program, which is your client, you can just introspect the interface. So um, you, you, you understand this pro programmatically, so you can go build yourself a GUI uh, without having to, to consult any other documentation. Okay. So, um, so I've showed you what happens when you do a get. Um, so this is the hierarchy. So um, if you go to do a, a get on Redfish v1, you get root. Root tells you, uh, gives you a link to every other subordinate resource, which uh, in this case are tasks, events, counts. Uh, it's got a pointer to where schemas are. And then the three main uh, resources that make up Redfish, which is, which is the system, the computer system, the chassis, and the managers. And then so by just doing a simple traversal, I've demonstrated that you can get down to that processor. Uh, and that processor is a collection. You want to go get the first one. So the path up there is actually all you need is, is you go down to system one, you go to processors, you, go, you pick processor number two, and you get back and you do a get. And you get your processor. And if that processor has actions to it, you can, you can uh, commit those actions to that processor. So um, if one last thing is you, I've separated this on the far right as to what is compute and what is just hardware platforms, right? And, and the presumption of, of Redfish was that this hardware manageability should be portable, uh, independent of what service is actually running on the system. So I uh, took this to SNEA. SNEA looked at it and said, hey, you're right. Uh, so guess what? We're going to reuse. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, constructs at the bottom, which is chassis and manager, but we're going to lay a whole bunch of models on top of it, uh, separate to do uh, 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 network storage stuff. And I'm sure you know, Rochelle will talk about that in the, in the next uh, presentation. And so there are other sessions for that. And okay, so that's all I'm going to talk about. Rochelle is going to take care of that particular discussion. So that took us from compute, storage, and now networking. So with networking, um, the DMTF with SIM actually tried to do networking. Um, uh, had networking models. Uh, networking well, looked at it, was amused, uh, but really didn't follow it. So with, uh, with taking Redfish into, into networking, the goal was to uh, take advantage of all the work um, that had been done by the, by the networking industry, and that's all encapsulated in, with the Yang models. So um, the goal here is to take Yang, uh, uh, convert it via a mapping specification into uh, CSDL, and then use that within a reference service. So uh, this proves out the, and so 
Uh, about two weeks ago, we released the first uh, phase one, a set of mappings. So we took these particular um, RFCs from, from IETF. We uh, commit the mapping. Uh, we published it as, as the models that you need to use to traverse this, um, get to each one of these um, interfaces and manip manipulate them as you want. Uh, uh, demos actually exist now that this is now working and we're gonna go back to IETF in, in November and, and demonstrate that. You know, six months ago we gave you slides. Uh, today we can, go, we can show you an implementation. So phase two is actually going to be uh, more uh, incomplete a uh, set of uh, Yang models to uh, manage an uh, Ethernet switch. So that's all we told you, uh, ITF. You said, that's all we care about. Yes, there are a bunch of other Yang models. If you guys are interested in this, you guys go, go uh, figure out how to do the mapping. You guys can participate to map the rest of this functionality across. But we, we within the DMTF, as far as converged infrastructure, are only interested in a finite set. So when we brought this up to um, ITF in March, um, um, they were they were very um, supportive. Uh, we had, of course, the, the natural question of uh, Yang, Rust. We have Rust Uh Why why are we doing this, guys? And so the co-chairs actually in the group of the routing worker group stood up and said, "Well, yes, you have Rust but Rust only gives you networking. It gives you a vertical to networking and." Redfish will get us out of just doing networking. We can, you, we can be part of a single interface that manages the entire data center, as opposed to, yes, I need, I need RESTCOM to do networking and I need another interface to do the rest of the stuff within the data center, okay? So, uh, so that took care of that question, and so they're now in line with what we need to do. Uh, the second was, uh, so John, uh, you did this mapping, now you have this uh, CSDL that looks like uh, model Yang. So what happens when there's a bug in the Yang that you discover? Uh, what happens, All right? And I said, well, my goal is to not fix that within my model. My, my goal is to send them back to you guys and go fix the Yang. <laughs> and because if you guys fix the Yang, right, then I can reconvert uh, this stuff uh, into, into a Redfish model faster than, than having this island of fixes that I have applied on top of, of Yang. And, and IETF said, that's the right answer because we don't want this island, right? We've spent a lot of time making sure Yang is right. Uh, uh, we don't want to create this island. And, and the major request out of us was when we returned um, in six months that we told them what was wrong with their existing Yang models because that will give them an impetus to go fix what has to be fixed. Um, and so as we, these, these uh, four, four or five models were fairly easy because they're on the standards track within IETF. There's a number of stuff that we need that is not in standards track. And we said, uh, if you guys don't put this in standards track, right, we're gonna have to invent our own uh, VLANs, MAC address tables, they're all dot zero, dash zero zero drafts that are running around. And we said we need to consolidate this, guys, because just as uh, uh, we want to build this on top of things that are becoming standard, right? We don't want to build it on yet another draft that's going to get changed. Um, so uh, we're doing um, ACOs now, right? ACOs is on dash 11, right? And it's on standard track, but it's still converting really fast. So this is available. Uh, if you want to look at phase one, is is out as work in progress. Um, we're expecting data back from um, um, ITF and any of the working groups. The uh, two internet drafts that we have out there is one the entire description of the mapping process, and two is is the list of all the Yang models that we expect to be part of the Ethernet switch. And this is actually kind of asking ITF to provide us some feedback as to are we going in the right direction? Do they have uh, recommendations on which Yang models we should use and don't use? Because God, this is a space that I, DMTF doesn't know about, right? We, we, we lean on their expertise to tell us which way to go. And this also allows us, if we need to, to use uh, Yang models from open daylight and anybody else who uses Yang models to encapsulate their, their networking knowledge. Okay, so next three slides. Uh, so in looking at the, at the um, uh, uh, abstract for this, uh, I noted that someone had mentioned I was going to talk about these things. So I quickly inserted these slides that I, you know, I'll go through them uh, and I'll try to explain exactly how you need to go through them. Uh, 
So um, the diagram on the right is probably the uh, best things to go through. So this is actually the, the resource model. So as I told you, root gets you to, to fabrics. Uh, fa and, and this is a collection. Uh, the white uh, circles are uh, instances or elements or members of that collection. And, then, and so on and so forth. So fabrics has a PCI uh, device and has a SAS fabric. Uh, the fabric itself has, has zones and points. And so um, uh, endpoints are basically described the periphery of your fabric. The zones uh, describe relationships between those endpoints because not all endpoints can look at other endpoints. So you can say these four uh, endpoints are connected to this incoming endpoint and you can build those zones, and then a relationship to the actual physical ports and, and switches themselves. So this, this is a, uh, a fabric model, which is fairly generic. It covers PCIe, covers SAS, and other fabrics that uh, uh, will arise. It includes the endpoints, the zones, and the switches themselves. Uh, switches include ports that are actually mapped to something. It's a logical port, which will, in the chassis model side, it will map to the actual physical port itself. And then uh, the mockups exist uh, within the current releases for uh, PCIe mesh and, and fairly complex PCIe structures. And that means PCIe's, which are composed of multiple PCI switches. Um, so we, we, you know, as good architecture, we develop simple models that we try to make sure work in arbitrarily complex uh, um, instantiations. Second is the memory model. So this is a, a service root system, as I told you before, computer system. Uh, I showed you the uh, JSON for that. That gives you the memory collection. And so there's individual pieces of memory in there. Um, uh, which are part of a memory domain and, and have particular memory trunks, chunks. So these are all aspects of ways of looking at memory and they're all associated with the model so you can understand what is a physical DRAM, right? What is interleaved together to give you actually particular uh, types of memory. So at whatever level of memory you want to go inspect this thing at, you can go, go find a way to go look at it. And then finally is more, the most complex one that we've come up with, which is, which is the initi initiator target. So this has to do with, uh, uh, applies a lot to, to SNEA because they're on the other side of a network, right? They're just a bunch of disk drives or, or volumes. And uh, so this uh, shows how uh, Redfish would model that, and that you have a service route, you have a system here, which is your initiator, and you have a system way over here, which is your storage node, which is on the other side of a, of a, of a SAS fabric. And so uh, this shows where computer system one has an Ethernet interface. It has endpoints, which is your initiator, uh, which is part of your fabric. So you have your system and you have your fabric. Um, your fabric has endpoints. So there's an initiator endpoint, there's a target endpoint. So the flow through here is computer system goes to initiator target via the uh, Ethernet interface, uh, traverses across their target via its zone, right, and then gets it. Ethernet interface on the uh, storage node, and then eventually uh, accesses the volumes of the drives, which, which are part of that storage node. So within Redfish, we're not trying to, to model um, a, uh, uh, compute and storage in isolation, right? It is, it is uh, modeling how the entire flow gets connected together. And when, you, when I step back and I say, okay, we're gonna compose a system, and that composed system has local drives and it has remote storage, right? Uh, this is how we represent the remote storage and how it gets created within, within the Redfish model. Okay. Okay, so, so that's as much model as you're gonna get. Um, hopefully that was easy to reverse. And each, each one of those endpoints, right? Um, which resources, you just do a get, and you get whatever data is in there. So you can traverse the model and do gets on all of them. So I mentioned about tool chains. So, um, um, all the stuff that is in blue um, um, is public. It's in a GitHub, and uh, uh, the DMTF has released it. And the, there's a chain here. So the bottom chain is the development chain for anyone trying to extend this model. So um, as I mentioned before, there's a JSON. 
packet. It's described by both uh, JSON schema and OData CSDL. Within our uh, construct of these models, we only work with the CSDL. We use an auto converter to generate the JSON, which we actually include in our releases. And this is for the tool chain. Out of JSON schema, we use the JSON schema tool chain to go generate uh, ref refresh documentation. So by, by converting to JSON, we can now take advantage of JSON schema tool chains too. Um, uh, we're working on a converter to take uh, to uh, auto generate uh, Refresh models from Yang RFCs. Um, and so this is uh, for anyone trying to develop on um, extend Redfish to new models, whether that be in, in, in vSIM or networking. Uh, and we, uh, it, this will accelerate you know, the, the uh, possibility of, of, of um, taking on new, new uh, management domains. Bill. Uh, within, uh, so higher up, right, once you have a JSON mockup, which is fairly easy, it's a bunch of JSON files, you don't have to worry about CSDL, you just create them. As a matter of fact, when we do our development within the standards body, we just do mockups. We get everyone to agree on the mockup, then we have the CSDL guys who understand all this stuff actually create this, this particular model, right? But once you have the JSON mockup, you can actually, we have tools to actually tilt this thing up as fast as you can possible, so you can initiate an uh, endpoint and start poking on this thing because this is what we find people understand, <laughs> Redfish. They don't want to understand any of this stuff, right? They want to understand this stuff because this is what the mockups that you saw in the previous slides all show up as. So we have uh, three because we, we kind of move this out as fast as we can. So uh, mockup server just allows you to do a get, tilts it up. All you can do is do a get. If you want to build clients, just do gets, be happy. Uh, the, there's a profile simulator. And then there's an uh, uh, interface emulator. So the interface emulator is a little more complex. It does static. It does dynamic. So you can, you can create an object. You can patch it. You can, you can post to it. Uh, you can go off and delete it. So this acts. Uh, it's built on top of uh, Python Flask and Flask RESTful. So, um, so it acts very much like an, like a, an endpoint. And this was to allow uh, people who are interested in doing Redfish clients uh, access to the Redfish interface before any of the implementations were actually out, that they could tilt up an a emulator or a simulator and start working on their client-side uh, implementations. And then once we got uh, an implementation, then, then we have test suites and clients. So these are all on GitHub. So there's a, there's a Redfish library, the Redfish tool. Uh, tool uh, oh, there should be a command line in here. So the Redfish uh, command line interface. And then uh, conformance tests. So there are now tests that will contribute it into, into the GitHub of how you go test across this interface. Um, and so as you, as you bring up your, your actual implementation, you can go test above it. What's missing here is uh, yet another box, which is, so this is, this is the world of DMTF uh, tools. So there's a, there's a world outside of this, which is everyone else is doing Redfish that um, um, are also making it public that we, we acknowledge, but we necessarily don't, don't uh, uh, try to advertise too much of. Uh, one thing I can't say is OpenStack has Sushi, yet, yet another build on, on Fish, um, which is a OpenStack uh, uh, connector uh, directly to Redfish. So it, instead of using IPMI to do manageability, uh, Ironic uses Sushi to go connect directly to Redfish implementations. So there's a, there's a body out there of other work that people are doing, um, and this is just the stuff that, that, that uh, the DMTF finds was necessary to enable Redfish in the industry. Okay? Okay, so I guess the last two slides is, so, so this is all the public stuff that's available. So there's a GitHub on DMTF. Uh, if you change DMTF to SNEA, you will find the SNEA, uh, 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 tools also. So they've actually taken the interface emulator uh, that I mentioned to tilt up a, a Redfish uh, 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 system service and uh, uh, currently extending it to a Swordfish interface emulator so you can go tilt up Swordfish and go write clients against the Swordfish implementation. Okay. And I'm sure they'll mention that later in the day. Um, there's a community forum, uh, which is basically is an open community forum. People can go talk to it. Uh, this is a demo of it. There's a, uh, both a Redfish uh, set of conversations and a Swordfish set of conversations. You don't have to be a member of DMTF to do any of this stuff. 
This is all public. There's a developers hub, uh, which will point you to um, uh, uh, a resource explorer we, where we've taken a number of the refresh stuff, uh, tilted up uh, implementations of it so people can just wander through. If you want to know what every resource looks like and what kind of data can come back from it, you can go wander this uh, uh, resource explorer um, there. There's also links to uh, presentations, and uh, the presentations are kind of long, they're about 40 minutes. Um, and what we discovered is that developers don't have uh, that much time in their hands, so there's actually a set of YouTube videos, which are five to 10 minute clips, that if that's how much time you've got, you know, we will give it to you in as small a chunk as you need it in order to spin up on Redfish. And then the last is uh, uh, there's the standards, which is a formal DMTF site. This is where we publish our standards, all our work in progresses. Um, so you'll find the networking stuff there, the uh, DSIM uh, models there, all is work in progress. And then uh, the Redfish Forum itself, which is the standards body forum within the DMTF, uh, focused on uh, extending Redfish. They, they're the ones that manage the uh, uh, GitHub uh, and the open source tools. Oh, uh, the last thing here is actually the Explorer within the um, uh, Developers Hub. So it, it gives you, it allows you to wander through um, all the all the resources. Okay. And finally, oh. so uh, in summary, uh, Redfish is a very rapidly ex uh, establishing itself as the modern interface for uh, data center management. It, it's rapid advances in the interface and in multiple schema releases that we have. We're trying to keep pace as fast as we can. Um, we're expediting the tool chain. Um, so we have dedicated uh, uh, contractors who will continually press forward the, the tool chain uh, to make all this, uh, to enable the industry. Uh, the industry itself has reacted very favorably. We've gotten a number of standard bodies that have actually begun to approach us to be part of Redfish. Um, uh, because uh, they see it as, as something that they need to get um, you know, aligned with because we, we're trying to define the namespace. Uh, most recently, uh, we, uh, we did a work in progress uh, release for telemetry. Uh, so this is just extracting data from this thing. Um, and uh, that's what brought in uh, ASHRAE. That's what brought in a number of them because they're not interested in management. They just want to fetch all this data, right? They want to know what's available and they want to unify this namespace because we can have telemetry, but if everyone has a different name for it, then you have to have this mapping algorithm to figure out what power control is or, or power consumption actually is. And uh, the telemetry model is trying to, to uh, regulate or standardize the namespace for, for getting telemetry from the system. And then academic research. So uh, we, we have uh, alliances with the Barcelona Supercomputer and Texas Tech to do um, additional work um, using, using Redfish and, and ex help us explore uh, things that we don't have time to go, uh, go um, uh, deal with. Okay? I think that is it. Okay. We're done. Also, we have a Twitter contest. Your chances are pretty good to win this. Hashtag storage management, and we'll be judging the best. And please start the QA. Any questions? Okay, then I think I'm complete. Any questions? So I'll be available for most of the day. Um, around here. Okay, any questions? So, oh. when you look down and start drilling down at the uh, target level, does it differentiate the uh, VM versus bare metal? Yes. Yes, so so right now, when we did SIM, keep leaning a lot on SIM, uh, we actually we have a SIM computer system, and when we did the virtualization model for, for um, in SIM, uh, uh, we, we, we stay with the premise that once you've asked for a system, how it was created is immaterial. So whether it was created as a VM, as a container, as a physical computer system, the system really doesn't care until it starts breaking. Then they want to know where all the pieces are, right? So you should be able to model it 
uh, and manage it at a computer system. And yes, there should be a flag in there which says how it came to be, but other than that, the, the, they should, you should be able to differentiate, but it shouldn't change the actual model itself or how you manage it.